Welcome to Church Online with the Stuart Church of Christ. I'm so excited that we have another opportunity to worship together, although distant. This here will replace the Sunday evening lesson. We'll have songs and prayers, an opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, and of course, a message from God's Word. I'm very excited to be here with you today, even though I am in my office and you are hopefully in your home staying safe. I'm excited to praise God, so let's get started. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart words of life, words of hope. Give us strength, help us cope in this world where'er we roam. Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart holy words of our faith handed down to this age came to us through sacrifice oh heed the faithful words of christ holy words long preserved for our walk in this world they resound with god's own heart oh let the ancient words impart ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words impart ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts Oh, let the ancient words impart. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. As the dear pens for the water so my soul longs after you you alone are my heart's desire and i long to worship you you alone are my strength my shield to you spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You're my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. so much more than anything. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to work worship you. I want you more than gold or 
silver only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Will you pray with me? A great and awesome God in heaven, we come before you to thank you for a, another opportunity we've had to dive into your word and to sing praises to you and worship you together, Father. We thank you for this technology that we have today that even though we are supposed to be separate, we can still be together and we can still interact with each other, Father. Father, there are many on our prayer list that we ask uh, for healing from you, Father, uh, for guidance and for strength. Father, there are some who have lost loved ones and we ask that you comfort them as only you can. Uh, especially now that we're separate and we can't always rely on physical comfort from each other. Uh, we ask for an extra blessing from you on them, Father. <clears throat> Father, those who are under financial stress, Father, we ask that you bless them. Uh, you reassure them that you are in control and that no matter what happens, uh, you will take care of them, Father. <clears throat> and Father, we ask that you continue to forgive us uh, every day as we know we need it every single day uh, and that you'll always be with us and you'll always keep us safe and uh, we know that at the end father we will get to be with you in heaven uh, and by that is by far the best blessing you can give us we thank you for everything and in your son's name we pray amen sweetly i'm trusting my redeemer as i go singing on my way so happy am yes I. so happy now yes happy am very I. happy Ever I know that he is with me, keeping my soul, soul from day to day. So happy am happy I. Happy now am I. Yes, happy am I. Yes, happy am I. Happy am I with my Redeemer, singing along the homeward way, and telling the lost telling of his all great the lost love. of his great mercy. Happy am I to I'm always happy, me, keeping me spotless yes, day by day. I'm happy along, yes, the, I'm happy way along, along the way, along the journey. Sweetly I sing along the journey, helping the lost to know his love. So happy am yes, I. Yes, so happy now. Yes, happy am I. Very happy now. Hoping to meet him in the morning. In that sweet happy, happy home above. So happy am happy I. Happy now am I. Yes, happy am I. Yes, happy am I. Happy am I with my Redeemer, singing along the homeward way, and telling the lost telling of His all great the lost love. of His great mercy. Happy am I to I'm always happy, me, keeping me spotless yes, day by day. I'm happy along yes, the I'm way, happy to along the way, along the journey, looking for Him most any moment, ready when Jesus shall appear. So happy am yes, I, yes, so happy now, yes, happy am very I, very happy now. Keeping my lamp all trimmed and burning, feeling is coming now is near. So happy am I, happy now am I, yes happy am I, yes happy am I. Happy am I with my Redeemer, singing along the homeward way, and telling the lost telling of His all great the love. lost of His great mercy. Happy am I to I'm always happy, me, keeping me spotless yes, day by day. I'm happy along, yes, the I'm happy way to along, along the way, along the journey. On toward and stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye To Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie We will rest in the fair and happy land by and by Just across on the evergreen shore Sing the song of Moses and the Lamb by and by, and dwell with Jesus evermore. O'er all those wide extended plains shines one eternal day. 
Their God, the sun, forever reigns and scatters night away. We will rest in the fair and happy land by and by, just across on the evergreen shore. Sing the song of Moses and the Lamb by and by, and dwell with Jesus evermore. When shall I reach that happy place and be forever blessed? When shall I see my Father's face and in His bosom rest? We will rest in the fair and happy land by and by, just across on the evergreen shore. Sing the song of Moses and the Lamb by and by, and dwell with Jesus evermore. Filled with delight, my raptured soul would here no longer stay. Though Jordan's waves around me roll, fearless I launch away. We will rest in the fair and happy land by and by, just across on the evergreen shore. Sing the song of Moses and the Lamb by and by, and dwell with Jesus evermore. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend, trust in his promises grand. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy, press along to the, to the goal, trust, trust in him who leadeth the way, you. he is king your soul, keep your soul that the all where you be faithful, look to Jesus and pray, pray and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing, and you'll and be happy to be happy, press on to the, to the goal. Trust in Him who leadeth the way, He is king your soul. Keep your soul, let the world know where you be belong. faithful, look to Jesus to and pray. Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust Him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing, and you'll and be happy to be happy, press along to, to the goal. Trust in Him who leadeth the way, He is keeping your soul. Keep your soul that Let the world know where you be belong. faithful, look to Jesus to and pray. Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. I've been thinking a lot about the early church and some of the terminology we use when we compare ourselves to them. Often we say that we are the first century church or we are attempting to mimic the first century church. And while I like that terminology and I believe it to be true, I do see some faults in it because when you look at it, they failed a lot in ways that I don't want us to mimic. So instead I began using a term, we are the church that Christ intended. And let me give you an example of how I don't want to mimic them in a negative way. This first example comes from the Peanuts character, Charlie Brown, not from the Bible. I know that's a little weird, but we will get into scripture and we'll get in there deep. But let's start off light with a little bit of Charlie Brown. In one of the, car in one of the comic strips, Snoopy, the lovable beagle, 
was pictured with his left leg broken. Snoopy philosophized about his plight one day while perched off on top of his doghouse like he often was, and he thought, my body blamed my foot for not being able to go places, and my foot says it was my head's fault. My head blamed my eyes, my eyes say my feet are clumsy, and my right foot says not to blame him for what my left foot did. Snoopy then looked back at the audience and he confessed, I didn't say anything because I didn't want to get involved. And so often you see this example in churches across America. But not only that, you see it in the first century church, especially when Paul is writing his first letter to Corinth, when he is dealing with their different struggles that they have addressed to him. One of the biggest ones they had was unity. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to start off in 1 Corinthians 4, verses 12 through 11. It says, now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are a variety of ministries in the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things and all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. The same spirit gives another the gift of healing. And to another, effecting of miracles. And to another, prophecy to another, the distinguishing of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of those tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. And that's what I want to start off today, is that as a church, we are all different. We come from different walks of life, different experiences, and because of that, we all have different things to offer. The majority of our text today will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And the first passage I want to look at is verses 12 through 14. We're going to be discussing diversity and unity coexisting for a common goal within Christ's church. And I think that's important because it would be foolish of me to think that I am well equipped to minister on all things. Because there are things that I can never experience given my life experiences. I cannot tell you what it is like to grow up as an African-American in this country, but I can listen to someone who has. That is what's beautiful about God's church. All of its members are different, and that's one of the main things that Paul emphasizes in his letter to Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 14 say, For just as the body is one and it has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we are all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. One of the main points Paul is making here is Jews, listen to the Greeks who you once excluded. You are all equal. No one's faith is more important than another because of their talents, because of their ability, because of their race. If you claim to be one body, start acting like it. Work together and learn from one another for the common goal, which is glorifying Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, it says, But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supply, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Grow together. If you cannot work together, you cannot grow. If you cannot grow, you cannot love. And if you cannot love, you are not listening to your head. You are not listening to Christ. So that's my first main point here is that diversity and unity must coexist for a common goal within our churches. If we act like they don't, we are, one, mocking the body, but two, we aren't acting on behalf of the head. We are acting on behalf of ourselves. We're going to continue in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to read verses 15 through 19. And here I want to focus on that. Competitive comparisons within the church are toxic. And I don't think this needs to be explained. If we compete with one another, the church then becomes about us and not God. We cannot try to be something we are not. There is no purpose for an ear to try to, work, to try to walk. Embrace how God made you and respect how God made others. Earlier this week, I read an article entitled, We Care More About the Church Than We Do the Christ. And while I don't like that terminology, I don't like how it's phrased, 
the author made a really good point. So often we focus on how we want church to look, how we want church to sound like, how we want to experience church, that we can neglect the entire purpose of Christ, which his example was to show us what church looked like, to show us how to treat one another, to show us how to communicate with the rest of the body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 15 and 19, it says, If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, thou would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, thou would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would we be hearing? If the whole body was hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose, if all were a single member, where would the body be? We cannot all do everything, nor can we all do one specific thing. And that is the beauty of being part of Christ's church. We can't compete with one another. We can't make worship a competition. Instead, we are told to embrace our ability and to encourage others to grow in theirs. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 11 to 12, we read, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the works of service, to the building up of the body of Christ. Everyone has a role, and that role is what makes the body function. If we neglect this simple principle, the church then, by nature, will become ineffective. So often within our churches, we glorify one talent above another, we glorify those who preach or those who teach or those who lead singing or lead prayers. And we neglect all of the other things because we consider them smaller gifts. And that's foolish to do because if we call something a smaller gift, we're emphasizing the fact that we think we don't need it. And to say that we don't need a part of Christ's body is to neglect the purpose of having a body completely. Each individual part is equally important. And if we don't treat it as such, then we're not walking the path that Christ laid out. We're acting as a body separate from the head. We're going to continue reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to continue with verses 20 through 26. And here I want to emphasize the point that we must depend on one another. Not only do we have to accept one another, not only can we not compete with one another, but we must rely on one another for the purpose which is Christ's kingdom. We can not we can't neglect one another just because they are different. A body cannot stand without its feet, nor can it hear without its ears. And if we try to make it do so, we are no longer acting on behalf of the head. Again, we are acting as a body without a head. We are acting as a church without Christ. Earlier, I mentioned that there are some things that I cannot effectively minister to. Like I said, I cannot tell you what it is like to be a black male growing up in this country. But I can depend on other members who have experienced that, who do know what it's like, who can teach on that, and who can effectively minister to those topics. Starting in verse 20, it says, As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to think they are weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we close with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving greater honor to the inferior members, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. Again, like I mentioned, we treat some members, we treat some talents as less important. And because of that, that is ineffective to Christ's overall goal. Because the members that we call important don't need to be glorified. They don't need to be lifted up. They don't need to be commended for their actions because they're already there. Somebody who's been a Christian for 70 plus years doesn't need to be commended for their faith. Whereas a person who has been a member for seven months they're going to need a lot of an encouragement. They're going to need a lot more help. And the body is supposed to help one another in these ways where one member suffers, the rest of the body can make up for it. We're all working together towards the same goal 
And because we are all one body, we must feel each other's pain. So when one member is suffering, especially if it's that weaker member, that member we consider less than, that part of the body that some would call less important, we must feel its pain. We must understand its plight. But the opposite is also true. We must celebrate its success. We must celebrate each other's success. If one member succeeds in one way or another, we must glorify them for that action. Because as a body, we are all one, and we succeed together, and we hurt together. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it says, As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Serve one another. This is something that some churches do really well, and some churches do terrible at. So often we think that our only purpose here on earth is to serve Christ, and that is true. But part of serving Christ is washing each other's feet. Part of serving Christ is living by the example that he set before us when he walked here on earth. And what he did was serve. And I know it's hard to think about a king serving one another, but I think about Paul when he wrote, husbands love your wife as Christ so loved the church, willing to give themselves up for it. That is service. That is pure, true love. And we're not only called to do that to our spouses, but we're called to do that to everyone we encounter, especially those who are part of the same body as us. We're going to continue reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want to focus on verses 27 through 31 next, where we're going to make the point that exclusivity does not exist in the church, or at least it doesn't exist in Christ's church, in the church that Christ intended. Again, this is not something that we can do on our own, Starting in verse 27, it says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, and gifts of healings, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. All our apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And yet, I will show you the most excellent way. Paul is telling them that they must work together with each other's strengths and weaknesses. And if that is true for the church that Christ intended in Corinth, that is true for the church that Christ intended in Stewart, Florida. We all have strengths and weaknesses. We all have things that we can minister to and cannot minister to. And if we want to be an effective part of Christ's ministry, we must work together. In Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, it says, Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. You can either use your gifts to glorify God, or you can use them to glorify yourself. There is no in-between. We all have talents. We all have different walks of life. We all have things that we can do that other members of this church cannot do. And if we selfishly use those talents for ourselves, if we selfishly use our life experiences to build ourselves up, we are neglecting to worship God. We're neglecting to glorify him. We're neglecting to give him what he deserves. We can either glorify him or glorify ourselves. And the final point that I want to make tonight is that Christ is this head of the body. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, it says, And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. We cannot be the head. You are not the head. I am not the head. None of us are the head of the church. And so often churches act like one member is the head, or one person is the head, or we're all trying to be the head forcing the body to walk in a direction that is different than what Christ intended. We must, neg- we must reject our selfish nature. We must put ourselves second, put ourselves third, fourth, fifth, whatever place it may be, because none of us are first. And I mentioned this a lot, and I'll mention it again. I think this is one of the reasons why God never picks a first-round draft pick. God always chooses the weaker to lead, God always chooses the little guy to save a nation. If you go all the way back to David, David was a little poor shepherd boy. 
and yet he is who God chose to save Israel in their time of struggle. God used young child kings to lead Israel. And God chose Christ to embody a lesser body, a poor body. He didn't give Christ the body of a Pharisee or a king or a ruler. He gave him the body of a carpenter. And that's because who we are doesn't matter. Because none of us are what's important. What is important is God and Christ. What's important is that we're part of this body. Now, if you've listened to this message today, and you don't think that you're acting as part of the body, if you think you're acting on behalf of yourself, or you are rejecting the the diversity and the unity that coexists in Christ's body, or if you're competing with one another, maybe you lack the ability to depend on your brothers and sisters, or you feel that they aren't there for you to depend on. Whatever it is, you can reach out to the elders here at Stewart. You can reach out to any of the members here at Stewart. We are filled with so many loving, great Christian people who will be willing to pray with you. But if you're not part of this body at all, if you've never accepted Christ, if you've never accepted his teachings, if you were never baptized into his death, body, and resurrection, then you're not a part of this body. Your feet aren't walking for Christ. Your ears aren't listening to his message. And your eyes aren't seeing his future that he laid out before you. If you're not a part of Christ's body, you too can reach out to the elders here at Stewart or one of the members here who I'm sure would love to encourage you in this journey. And you can accept Christ. You can take on his his death and baptism. You can be resurrected as a new person in a new body, a body filled with loving members who want to help you, who are willing to sacrifice for themselves to see you grow. That is something you can do tonight. That is something you can do tomorrow morning. That is something you can do at any time. And I encourage you to do so. I'm going to put a link to the church Facebook page at the bottom of this video. You can message us there. Typically, we reply within minutes. It goes to all of us. We all get a notification on our phone. I really encourage you to do that. Thank you so much for listening to me tonight. This has been a message that's been on my mind lately. I've been struggling with the terminology we use when addressing ourselves and comparing ourselves to the first century church. And I really want us to be the church that Christ intended. I don't want to fall for the same sins that early churches did. I want us to learn from their failures and grow to be stronger, better representatives of Christ here on earth. I hope you have a good night. Thank you. Teach me, Lord, to wait down on my knees till in your own good time you answer my pleas. Teach me, Lord, to rely on what others do, but to wait in prayer. From you, teach me, Lord, to wait while hearts are aflame. Let me humble my pride and call on your name. Keep my faith renewed, my eyes on thee. Let me be on this earth you want me to be. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, Teach me, Lord, to wait. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the 
Son, Spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know that it's the presence of the with your love and for these blessings we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place I'll prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. I'd like to read a verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is the Apostle Paul speaking, the author of the book. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread. And he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me, often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Will you give thanks for the fruit of the vine and the bread with me? Dear Lord, our Father, we are so thankful for everything that you have given us. We are thankful that you know us, that you know we need this weekly reminder of your sacrifice. Lord, we're thankful that you know we are weak and that these emblems can help remind us that you love us, that you gave your son for us, that he gave his life so that we could have a new life with you. Lord, thank you for the bread which represents his body his flesh that was pierced, nailed to the cross, God. Lord, we also ask that you be with us at this time, that we can examine ourselves, look into our hearts, and see how we can better live for you. Lord, we're also thankful for the fruit of the vine, an emblem that represents the blood of your son, Jesus, the blood that was shed for us, that poured out from his body when he was nailed to the cross. God, we know we can't ever do anything to deserve that sacrifice. But we ask that you be with us now, that as we look into our hearts, we see our purpose and that our purpose is to serve you. God, help us remind us at this time that we are to be your servants here on earth, representatives of your people, to show people the covenant that you made with us. God, we love and respect you. We're so thankful for all that you have given us, especially at this time. And it's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen.
the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again over every thought, over every word. May my life reflect the beauty of my Lord, because you mean more to me than any earthly thing. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. Won't you reign in me again? You are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My soul magnifies the Lord. The Father and spirit rejoices in God. The Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. The Spirit, my spirit rejoices in God. My soul is raised and loved the Father, and my spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul is raised and loved the Spirit, my spirit rejoices in God. My soul is raised and loved. Gracious, loving, and heavenly Father, we're so very thankful for this opportunity to be alive today. We're so very thankful that we have this time to come and worship you. You're so great, powerful. Your grace and love are uncomprehensible. We're so very thankful for your great plan of salvation for us all we're so very thankful for your word your church and most importantly your son who sacrificed on the cross for us allowed us the opportunity to have everlasting life with you in heaven father we're so very thankful for our leaders and elders in our church that have worked tirelessly to bring your word to us, 
continually teaching us about your word, about you, and helping us grow in our knowledge of you. We're so very thankful that you provided them here for us, and we continue to bless them and help them to help us grow. We pray, Father, for all those souls that are hurting. We pray for those that are physically hurting, mentally, emotionally, and financially. We pray that you will bring them rest and soon closure to this isolation so that you can return us all to your church. We pray also for those that are lost in this world and suffering through this hard time. We pray that it will lead them to you and ultimately to us so that we can win them back to your church. Father, we also pray that at this time, with this isolation, that it will create a new fertile ground for us to win new souls. Help us to be the teachers we need to be. Help us to live the lives we need to. And help us to ultimately have the words to say when we need to say them. Father, we thank you for this evening that we can come together. We pray that our service to you will be pleasing and that all we do for you in our daily lives is a great example of shining our lights in this world. In your Son's holy and blessed name, Amen. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I am where go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore.